Hello everyone, today we're back for the third episode of GNU Linux Game Hacking and as promised, even though I'm a bit late, uh, today I've got to show you graphics and graphics with MGY, which is a fairly nice library, so I'm going to show you real quick. Oh, it's just game just crashed, I know why, it's just because of the problem with MGY. So there you go, you have the MGY demo displayed. So I haven't done any input stuff yet and the mouse is not being sent. Uh, I will explain to you how to do it and I will also do it just for you. Um, so I, I've added quite a lot of files in the, the project. So I've changed the CMake list a lot. I've just, so here I've just, change this so that I can do the debugging but that's something you can remove um, I added a C flags especially this one it's important because right now I am compiling a C library which is a GL3W which which is a library for glue which is required for MGY so you will see how this whole thing works I've just added dependencies for the SDL right here and basically the libraries here okay, so i'm just going to show you real quick so if you go into src there's a folder called mgy which is the one that will put the download link to because it's a special version it's a version with a uh, implementation for opengl es okay so you can use different different ways to load the OpenGL. You could use the um, the one that's embedded into the game that you're hacking. You could even use the the game's widget library, which I could have done in, in co-op, but the game's widget library is pretty old and there's barely anything more than buttons. <laughs> yes, and there's the GL3W code. Uh, so you will need this. I will put the link to download it. Of course, it will be in the, with the repo if you want it. Want to download everything at once. I've slightly modified the trim function because um, of unloading, so I've removed here the when it was distracting, it would call the uh, the release. Now the release has to be called manually, but that's for the best. So I've added quite a lot of stuff right here. So there's a uh, includes for MGY. Uh, the order is kind of important, okay, for the OpenGL and MGY. Um, so here. Now this is the my swap window, which is the function I've modified. So I'm I just have a static to check if we're doing it for the first time or not. And if we're doing it for the first time, I'm I'm just initiating initializing a few stuffs. Uh, right now I don't need a window, so I could make this initialization right here after just after this, and this would also work, I think. Uh, but you know, you might have some issues because uh, when this function is being called, there might be a special state in OpenGL. So I prefer to call things here so that I'm, I know that it works. Here it is the, the version for OpenGL in it, for so that's version for GLSL language. Um, because it works with 1.0, I've left 1.0 because I know that most devices are going to get, I'm going to support it, of course. Uh, now the versions are more like 3 or 4 something. Here we just initialize MGY. We tell MGY that we want to draw uh, the size of the, the screen and stuff like that. We can change the scale and such. Here it's important to get the time because in the MGY this will be required later, but there are some widgets that work with the time. So there's a for FPS counter and there's also widgets where you need double clicks and stuff like that. So it needs the time. That's very important. So this is the time between the current and the last frame. Uh, and if if we're talking about um, if it's zero, then well, this happens if we're like uh, doing the initialization. So this time and last time are just the same. Oh, it should not actually, actually, this should not be a problem, right? Oh, no, no, no. Yes, on the first the first time it happens. We just have a, a few problems. Okay, oh, actually, I forgot to set last time. Um. Okay, uh, I forgot to do this. Okay, it was not important because I was not really dealing with any widgets at all. But it's gonna get important. Then this is the MGY code. So new frame, 
and then you do drawings and then end frame and you stop drawing here we do the rendering and stuff and such so when you draw something in UI, it's put into a list and it's going to get drawn uh, when you call this function if you this is actually very important because you draw your MG, mgui window whenever you want but you want them displayed last so that's why you call this function after the rest and when you make a draw call it's stored into an array uh, which the thing that's not very nice is that this array is often on the heap and it's its size changes uh, every every time you call it but every time you do a draw call so but other way, other than that it's not very much of a problem here i just use a, a cool trick so this is a begin and it's an invisible window and it's always shown uh no title bar no move no scroll bar it's just invisible window that cannot be moved and that's on the background this is important because Every time I'm going to draw a window, I'm going to draw it inside of this big window, which is invisible. Uh, it's kind of going to act like a canvas. Now, why is it important? It's because if you draw this window outside of this one, then you need to make sure that you don't draw anything outside of the frame buffer. Because if you were to do this, uh, this would crash uh, your program. And now having it drawing inside of an already existing window will do this just for us so we don't really have to do it so you, what you could do if you have widgets that cannot be moved and that you're sure that they will not go out of the screen space then you can actually draw them separately um yeah there's not really much other than that so here i haven't changed much i uh actually here don't think i change anything i just change right here release something i forgot in the previous episode if you don't put a release here what's going to happen is um basically when you close the, the program when you unload uh it won't it will still the opcodes that you have written when you did the trampoline will still try to call this function but it, it's not in memory anymore so we'll try to jump into a uh a non-existing address and this will crash your program the game actually so this is just a little little thing that you have to do here actually you could probably autom automize it by having an array somewhere a vector where you push all of the uh, trims and you deallocate them for the end but just because i have even only one then it's not really worth doing it okay so next i'll go a little bit into more detail and i'll show you how you can uh get inputs working all right, I'm back. Now I'm back into the game, as you can see. And inputs are working. I can use the mouse to move stuff. I can input some text. It seems to be working. I can use caps, words, shift. Yes, so that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, well, I still have one issue though. It's the scrolling. It doesn't work. I can scroll, but it kind of works but it's very inconsistent and it works you know one out of maybe 20 times it's pretty annoying uh that's something i've been able to fix in counter-strike it's related to the game not to mgy but yeah it's related to how inputs are processed and stuff so not really knowledgeable about that anyway and i even add, added a key which is insert and what it does is it toggles on or off uh, the MGUI window, as you can see, just like this. All right, just wanted to show you a quick thing, but uh, due to recent updates, now you can no longer run Zen Co-op. So this is related, not to Zen Co-op, but my distribution. I changed the version of Glib CXX, and this symbol here is not found. So I will just show you how you can. Um, because the game can actually run from the Steam. If I run it from Steam, it works just just like that. It works. So I just just wanted to to show you how you can do how you can extract the 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 environ the uh, basically the parameters that you can use to run the game uh, in command line. Because if I run it with Steam, I don't have any command line, and if I want to print something, 
then I can either use the console in game or I can use files or things like that with pipes and stuff. But actually, it is a pretty easy way. So you need to get yeah, used in co op. Is this I'm gonna open a terminal real quick? CD 19642, and then there should be a file called environ right here. And well, here the problem was related to so there's actually a bunch of information. Things are separated by uh, the null ter by a null terminator. So this is a what a null terminator looks in my looks like in my text editor. Your text editor might not even show it, but anyway. And so here this was related to libraries. So if we look into LD library path, uh, this is a path that indicates where to look for for the system libraries. So I'm going to look for where it ends. So it's actually very long. So I'm just going to select it. It seems to be ending about right here. As you can see, there's the XDG runtime here. So I'm going to select just right before I'm going to copy. And now um, if I go into here and I can paste it. So I just have a, a little bit of work to do because there might be some spaces to remove and stuff like that. Okay, right here, there's one. Right here, there's one too. Okay, so now it seems to be a valid thing. I'm going to quit the game. And I'm going to type something co-op.sh. And now the game seems to be running. So we've got this error message related to the local and stuff. But that's something I used to get before. We've got just a bunch of problems here. It did not find lib icon, which is, yeah, so that's related to... Um, to local and and yeah a conversion and stuff like that. I looked, I looked it over a few uh, a few times ago, so it doesn't find the font. Uh, well, this one is pretty weird because the the clash be elf class thirty two, so it should actually accept it. But yeah, pretty weird. Anyway, so we've got the game working. You can uh, we can try and join a. I actually I'm, I may not be connected to the internet, but as you can see, just run the game. And I might okay. Can I can I join the public server? Okay, I might have found a weird map. Um, yeah. Okay, but as you can see, I'm connected to Steam. I can press Shift now, but it's a bug on the Steam version. So as you can see, this is a quick fix if you have problems like this. Uh, if you've ever tried to make a hack, for instance, for CS:GO, which is my which I try to do. I had some issues with um with this this thing I could not write directly to console. Okay, so this is a pretty funny map, right? But anyway, so I could not write to the console like this, so I could write into the game's console, but you you know you have some work to do before you're able to do that. So anyway, this is the fix if you had the issue. Actually I did not really talk about it in the previous video videos, but this could have been an issue for you. And in the code, now I I didn't change much, so I added this, which is for the variable. Uh, actually, I made it a little complicated. I use extern and define it right here. Uh, that's just because in reality, what you would do is you create a maybe setting of a plus plus file and move all that here and define the variable right here um, in some way, but it's not really uh, something I need to do right now. My code is just a few hundred lines, but this is something you would do yourself if you were making a cheat. You could use a namespace, you could also use classes or something else. Actually, I think classes would be cool uh, depending on how you do it. Um, because you could just have methods then that would work uh, and do things. So here I moved, it was a line right here. I moved it right here. I'm not sure it has any, does any difference. I also removed here. There was a little bit of, of uh, I added something in the previous, um, the previous section and it just was a, a mistake. Okay. And here I added this. Uh, I took it from the internet. It's just simply mappings because the, there's the keys in SDL and there's how they translate it to MGY. So you just have to do it like this. 
And then here, there's not really much different. I made this so here and here is something you should look into because this is displaying the mouse. And of course, when you're playing, you don't want to display it. But when you're you open the menu, you want it to display. You want it to get displayed. So when you're in the menu, it doesn't matter because the game will display it anyway. But when you're in the game, you only want it to be displayed when you're inside the game. And you can show this. You can choose this with this function. And there's also one capture mouse, which is uh, whether or not mouse is captured by MGY. And of course, if it's not set to true, then we don't have anything to draw. Just logical. And of course, it's polar events. So here we do the insert thing. And here we also translate uh, some of the SDL key code into MGY uh, key code. Yeah, it's not really complicated. It's also something I took from the internet. Um, just about the same. And I also added return uh, get original function. I don't know if it was there in the previous seg section in the previous video, but anyway, here I put it. It's important because it returns an int. And it's actually important that it does return. And we don't really know the value. It's actually, I think it, I can't remember exactly what it does, but it's important. I think it's like when you have multiple inputs on a frame, it tries to process them and it returns a specific value depending on how much, how many inputs there are to process. Okay, I think something like that. I'm not really sure. And the rest is just what you've seen before. So. Nothing really has changed, and now we got inputs in the game. And here, this will be the end of this series, but what I mean by that is that I've made this uh, this thing, and it's just really two files, a trampoline and a uh, main function. Main file, just two files, and I just with just these two files, I can display stuff. And what I mean by end is because this is something you could do on any game, pretty much. Any game that uses SDL, and this could even work on uh, SDL and OpenGL, any game, even if the game does not really use C or C++. Because here, the only thing we assume is that the game is using OpenGL and SDL. Uh, that's, that's about it, and most games actually do use these, especially on do Linux because it's pretty much the the standard way to go. Uh, maybe you might find some games running on Vulkan and on that I have no expertise whatsoever. But that's it. And the reason I say it's the end is because in the next episode we're going to focus on trying to understand the game structure, the game engine mostly, and how to get access to, for instance, the game's internet console like uh, this this one. Uh, one of the first thing that we're going to do is try to display things into this console right here. Or, for instance, getting like the, the name of the level the player is in. And from that, we can also maybe try to get an entity list. And once we've gotten this entity list, then we can start making wall hacks and iron bots. Okay, now I just figured there was just a slight mistake, as you can see here. There's some sort of border. It's a little bit smooth. And this is because of this invisible window actually uh, I think I should have to do like push file bar file bar uh, border size I think it's something like that I'm not sure but you might you might want to check it yourself just disable the border so that you don't see don't see it anymore right here because it's just a little bit distracting Anyway, so hope you like the tutorial. Uh, if you, by the way, if you have any problems with MGUI, just tell me because I actually assumed that it would work on your computer because it worked on mine. But you might have some issues with, for instance, installing uh, OpenGL and compiling with it. And also, I'm using a fairly recent compiler, but all of this uh, works on a more on an older version of C++. Uh, maybe just the, the lambda thing right here that's a little bit recent, but I think the rest is pretty much something you could do like in some of the very first version of C++ you could even use pre-C++11 and this would probably still work. Okay, probably not this, but you, ha you just have to declare the variables right here, but 
aside from that, it's pretty. It would pretty much be uh, something you can do with an with an old compiler. Aside from that, you might have issues with libraries. So just tell me if you have, if you do, and I can help so that I can help you. Goodbye, everyone.